If I have chosen the right time and the right place, and have recited the mantras correctly, and from a pure heart, then the Lord of the water gives us water. We do not place much trust in such actions, which may be met with a smile these days. Could it be that just one man, not some huge modern laboratory with the latest technologies, but just a person could influence a natural process solely by the force of his desire? And there was outdoor wedding outside a museum in Ontario. And, um, well, we didn't bring umbrellas, but some people did. And the sky was all overcast, and the rain started to come. That was half an hour before the wedding. And it started to rain, all the umbrellas went up. And so I and three students, two other students, said, OK, let's meditate for, uh, for um, better weather. Within a minute, an opening in the clouds came, and the sun just shone right down in this area. Only, not all over, just shone right down this area. By the summer of 1991, Israel had no rain for two years. The water in the country's only freshwater lake, Lake Kinneret, had fallen 15 centimeters below the critical level. Then 10,000 Israelis gathered at the Wailing Wall to pray for rain. On the third day, rain came down on the country in torrents. Many people explained this fact as simple coincidence. Belief in coincidence is neither scientific nor religious. From a scientific point of view, there is scientific determinism, while from a religious standpoint, there are things that are done which have an influence on the outcome. Coincidence is a way in which people try to escape bearing any responsibility. Just as the cry of a bird in the mountains can cause a powerful avalanche or the motion of a butterfly's wing can change the weather over an entire continent, likewise people can launch global processes solely by the power of their thought. And that is no exaggeration. Not a single scientist who is familiar with systems theory doubts that. It is entirely a question of waiting for a moment when the system is in a state of instability. In a phase of instability, the motion of thought alone is sufficient for the system to start to change. I do not always see it when my own mistake or sin comes back to me in another guise, although, essentially, it is a single unit. Whatever it is that I did wrong returns to me, not as punishment, but as a result. With all the abundancy of water on the planet, less than 1% of it is available fresh water. This supply has been practically unchanged in the course of human history, while the population has been constantly growing. The world has never seen that many people as there is on the planet today, six and a half billion. But even now, there would have been enough fresh water for everybody if it were not for the severe attack of the human civilization. Look, imagine, if there will simply not be any water, that it will go away deep underground. Who shall give you water? Which will spout freely from the ground and be easy for you to reach. Today, more than a billion people of the earth lack access to safe drinking water. Over five million people, half of them children, die for this reason each year. This is ten times more than perish in wars each year. If this problem is left unsolved, water may become a source of international conflicts in the 21st century. Already now, it is gradually attaining the status of a basic resource which is beginning to figure in the political dialogue among countries and peoples.
See, we talk a lot about an upcoming oil crisis because we will run out of oil. But I think it is even more important that we worry about the water, that we don't run into a water crisis. According to UN data, around 10 million tons of oil annually pours into the world ocean. Along the U.S. Atlantic coast are buried 90,000 containers of radioactive waste with 100 kilocuries of activity, while the European part has 500 kilocuries. Countries with sea access dump industrial, construction, and radioactive waste into the ocean. As it is dumped and descends through a column of water, some of the polluting substances dissolve and change not only the quality of the water, but also its memory. The ocean is also still capable of erasing these memories because of its salinity. But nonetheless, the dilution effect is there. It also needs to be discussed and studied. Because at very great levels of dilution, sometimes the memory begins to have even a stronger influence than at slight, so to speak, levels of dilution with high concentrations. We have to pay attention to this. This is a very difficult period of our planetary existence. Today, we've already plowed up all the lands possible, and we've lost 33% of our green covering and half the plankton in the ocean. So the problem might seem to be far off, but there is water everywhere. In the past year, the temperature of the cold, deep-sea waters under the Gulf Stream fell by one degree. In the past nine years, the rate of melting of Greenland's iceberg has tripled. In the past 30 years, the destructive force of hurricanes has doubled. The number of natural disasters is rising. In the decade from 1973 through 1982, 1,500 disasters occurred worldwide. In 1983, 1992, there were three and a half thousand. In 1993 to 2002, there were 6,000. 226,000 people died or disappeared during the December 2004 tsunami in Southeast Asia, while half a million were left homeless. The October 2005 flood in Europe left 200,000 people homeless. Around 1,300 people died during Hurricane Katrina in August 2005. One million people were left homeless. Almost four million people have died in natural disasters during the past 30 years, while four and a half billion people were affected. If you ask the ordinary man in the street today whether or not man and human activity are to blame for the increased number of hurricanes on the planet and their increased destructive force, I think that every other person will say yes, this is a consequence of human activity. I think that uh, what's happening in our world today, uh, all the uh, tsunamis and the freak weathers everywhere and uh, the terrorism and the fear that is uh, gripping us, all of the things that are happening uh, is a result of unhealthy individual health. And it affects the other way too. Okay, and also I think it's, uh, it, it's a result of water being polluted. The phenomenon of structural memory enables water to take an impression of everything that happens around it. 
and to connect all living systems together. And each one of us is a link in an endless chain of information transmission. But in addition, each of us is also a source of information. Every one of our actions, a thought, an emotion, an uttered word, separates from us and becomes part of the overall energo-informational environment. Informational dirt is poisoning the water, accumulating layer by layer in its memory. If that process were to continue endlessly, the water could lose its mind. But it is endowed with a self-cleansing capacity. This occurs at the moment of phase transition, when it vaporizes and then condenses and falls as rain, or when it freezes and then melts. Shaking off the informational grime, water preserves its basic structure, that is, the program for life.